Lady of Good Studies. Pray for us. Our Lady of Good Studies. Pray for us. Our Lady. In around 1883, the federal government formalized the residential school system. Schoolyard full of activity on a crisp winter day. And the children are Indians, students at the Canadian government school. The system had actually been around since the mid-1600s when church-run schools specifically for indigenous children were built in eastern Canada. But when they wanted to focus on the expansion of Canada, the government stepped up its plans to get rid of the Indian problem and they decided to fund and expand the schools. This is a residential school, one of 69 in key locations from the American border to above the Arctic Circle. More than 10,000 children attend these schools, children who, for various reasons, can't go to regular day schools in Indian communities. It was decided that this was the best way to get rid of the Indian question altogether. Indian culture is a contradiction in terms. They are uncivilized. The aim of education is to destroy the Indian. Nicholas Flood David Report, 1879. In order to make that happen, they decided that if they forcibly took children away from their families, took away every aspect of who they were as human beings, if their traditional knowledge was erased, their identities obscured and their voices silenced, they could take the Indian out of the child, and their problem would be solved. There would be no more Indians. In order to educate the children properly, we must separate them from their families. Some people may say that this is hard, but if we want to civilize them, we must do that. A federal cabinet minister, 1883. Canada's first prime minister, Sir John A. Macdonald assigned the government Indian agents and other government officials to develop and maintain these schools. The great aim of our legislation has been to do away with the tribal system and to assimilate the Indian people in all respects. Sir John A. Macdonald, May 2nd, 1887. They would be federally funded, church-run, industrial-style boarding schools and would be one of the many tools used as part of a broad, aggressive assimilation plan. Their education must consist not merely training of the mind, but of a weaning from the habits and feelings of their ancestors, and the acquirements of the language, art, and customs of civilized life. Edgerton Ryerson, 1847 Report for Indian Affairs. The RCMP were dispatched and in charge of removing children from their homes and enforcing punishment on any parents who tried to stop them. Children as young as four years old were taken and siblings were separated from each other. When children arrived at the school, they were giving steaming hot baths.
and rough brushes were used to scrub their skin raw because they were dirty savages. They had their hair cut and were made to wear European clothing removing all visual aspects of their culture. They were forbidden to speak their language and were punished if they did. They did not get the same education as the public system. Most time was spent doing unpaid labor which the schools relied on to run. Girls were taught to sew, cook, do laundry and clean. Boys were taught carpentry, tinsmithing and farming. More than 40% of the teaching staff were not actual teachers. And because they had so little time for school, most students only reached grade 5 by the time they were 18. Fort Albany Residential School in Ontario, also known as St. Anne's, was one example of the worst of the abuse to Indigenous children in Canada. It opened in 1906, and if it had not been for the persistence of the survivors of the school who began to tell their stories of excessive physical and sexual abuse publicly in 1992, the information about what happened would have disappeared. The Government of Ontario then started a five-year investigation and documents were released in 2014 that revealed stories of the children being locked in the basement for days. Forced to wear soiled underwear on their heads for hours. Forced to eat their own vomit. Beaten with metal whips and even being strapped to a homemade electric chair in front of other children while staff watched. There were stories of horrific sexual abuse to children of all ages by priests, nuns and other school staff. Residential school survivors from across the country have stories of physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, starvation, being part of malnutrition experiments, neglect, racism, and loneliness. These children did not know the love of parents, family, or their community and were deprived of emotional caring or connection. One of the darkest elements of the residential school system was how many children died or just disappeared while attending. It was standard practice to include a cemetery alongside schools when they were built so they would have a place to bury the children who did not survive. In 1907, a government medical inspector named Peter Bryce reported that because of the abuse, poor sanitation, overcrowding, and severely inadequate food and health care, 24% of previously healthy Aboriginal children were dying in the schools. He also reported that seriously ill children were often sent home so that their deaths didn't get recorded at the school and up to 75% of these children died at home. Indian children in the residential schools die at a much higher rate than in their villages. But this does not justify a change in the policy of this department which is geared towards a final solution of our Indian problem. Duncan Campbell Scott, Deputy Superintendent of Indian Affairs. 
After reporting these facts, the government took away Peter Bryce's position and hid the facts from Canadians. By around 1920, the federal government just stopped keeping track of the children who died because the numbers were so alarming. Often it would take months for families to learn that their children had died while at the school. Many families never heard what happened to their children and still wait for the answers to this day. Today, the people who attended residential schools call themselves survivors to acknowledge the children who never returned to their families. Video testimony of some of the thousands of residential school survivors set the tone for this historic day. The residential school experience is clearly one of the darkest, most troubling chapters in our collective history. But as the survivors have shown us, they have survived. More than 150,000 Indigenous children were taken from their families and forced to attend these schools beginning in 1883. And the last residential school did not finally close its doors until 1996. But that is not where the story ends. When the children turned 18, they were sent back to their communities. The clock had run out on the assimilation process. Our objective is to continue until there is not a single Indian in Canada that has not been absorbed into the body politic and there is no Indian question and no Indian department. Duncan Campbell Scott, Deputy Superintendent of Indian Affairs, January 1st, 1920. They were left completely on their own to try to deal with the unimaginable trauma with absolutely no support. They were just expected to jump back into their life that they had been forced to forget. They had never experienced love and affection from parents or family, so they found it harder than others to show love and affection to their own children. They had no outlet or resources to express or release their pain. For some, the only temporary relief would often come when they would turn to alcohol and drugs. For just a bit, they could escape the emotions of what had been done to them, but the source that allowed them to forget became their medicine. It wasn't until 2008 that the federal government acknowledged residential school survivors with a public apology. Mr. Speaker, I stand before you today to offer an apology to former students of Indian residential schools. Survivors were asked to relive their experiences with a complete stranger who determined where they fit into a formula. I really, really was alone, lonely, scared. Damage done from one year was worth $10,000. Every year after that was worth $3,000. The money was the value given for the loss of identity, family, tradition, culture, feelings of shame, suicidal thoughts, and the never-ending sense that you are lost and might not ever be able to be who you actually were meant to be. Then the survivor's children and grandchildren became a part of this pattern of lingering trauma. Things have just become part of our everyday life. Some of us escape the cycle, but lots of us feel like we are locked in a dark room. purposefully hidden behind unseen barricades that were erected decades ago to keep us in the shadows.
And if the country were to ask how we were doing, we would say that we feel like Canadians are finally starting to open their eyes to what has been happening for generations. There were more than 150,000 Aboriginal children who attended residential schools between 1857 and 1996. Every Canadian needs to know and acknowledge our history, to know the truth that for so long has been hidden. To let the survivors know that they have been heard, that they are seen, and all of the children, youth and young adults who did not attend these schools, but who are the descendants of the survivors. We need to let them know that they are no longer invisible, that we see them. I cry at night from the pain that I've witnessed A young father figure who wants his family back together I need this message to be heard so it can last forever I'm calling out to you In every direction I'm trying to speak the truth The vision is destined As the rain pours down We just wanna be heard Sing this strong and loud Just like the thunder I'm sick of being silenced And this understood is getting tiring It feels ain't working on those drinks Been hurting my life But trust me, I've been trying Is this no more gone have we lost this back? I don't know Can we get through this without no regrets? I hope so When the rain came down, we let the fire fade out So many things in my mind that I wanna say alone Don't wanna cry I wanna make my own decisions My home has a wish and for the teachings of my people Let's grow in the spirit I know that I'm different I just wanna find a true reason To stand tall from my home to keep the youth dreaming I'm calling out to you In every direction I'm trying to speak the truth The vision is destined As the rain pours down We just wanna be heard Voice to my inspiration and learn how to breathe through the frustrations. We need to learn about a love that doesn't lead us to silence. I've been living life under extremities, the strife that comes my way, I'll learn to let it be. Strong and loud, just like the thunder. 